Sony just doesn't get it. They don't understand why we go to watch Spider-Man movies. It isn't his rogues gallery, which at least in the comics rivals even the great Batman villains. It isn't because we care about the secondary characters like Black Cat and Silver Sable. It's because of the webhead himself. There's just something about Peter Parker that endears us to his character. It could be that we see ourselves in him as he struggles to pay his rent and is broke like most normal people. It could be his unique power set and one of a kind method of traveling. Whatever it is, we love Spider-Man. So why the hell does Sony keep making movies without him? What's up everyone, welcome to Let's Talk, the series where we are tired of Sony's bullshit. This is your angry neighborhood, Birdman, and today we're talking a huge nothing burger. The premise of Morbius is pretty simple. Michael Morbius, a renowned hematologist with a rare blood disease, searches for a cure for his disorder, conducting less than legal genetic research. During his quest, he splices vampire bat genetic material with his own, curing his disease, but unwittingly turning himself into a pseudo vampire where he regularly has to consume blood or he will revert back to his weakened self. Meanwhile, his research has gotten into the hands of his best friend, who also becomes a pseudo vampire, and Morbius must stop him from killing innocent people. The problems with this movie begin at the premise. Sony has taken a Spider-Man and Blade antagonist and crafted a movie around Morbius fighting someone exactly like Morbius. This is Sony's misguided idea that they can make Spider-Man villains good guys and remove the element that makes them compelling in the first place. Their interactions with Spider-Man. Why do we want to watch a film where a character is simply fighting a more comic accurate version of himself? We tune in because we want to see how the unique abilities of Spider-Man will help him fight a vampire with super speed or an alien parasite with a taste for brains. What is interesting about Venom fighting Riot or Morbius fighting Hunger, at least in movie form? They took all the wrong lessons from Venom's financial success and did exactly the same thing with this movie. A soulless cash grab banking on you showing up to the theater in the hopes of some connection with Spider-Man. Let me save you some money. There isn't one. There really isn't much to cover. It's an early 2000s era superhero film where you have a rushed and horribly edited intro to the character and a villain with exactly the same power set who doesn't really have much motivation to become evil, but does because we need a fight at the end. Tyrese plays an FBI agent and literally does nothing in the film. You could have cut all his scenes and the movie wouldn't noticeably change. Hell, there's a horribly edited scene in this movie where Tyrese is chasing Morbius and Morbius inexplicably stops running away and the next scene he's in jail. This movie is bad, guys. The special effects are okay-ish, but are undermined by random bullet time slow-mo shots that serve almost no purpose other than to show you what you couldn't see a second ago because the fight scenes are complete ass. There's also a weird effect that accompanies Morbius whenever he moves, almost like the studio looked at the Death Eaters and the Harry Potter movies and just hit copy-paste. There's a barely characterized and useless love interest because of course there's a love interest. This is an American movie, remember? Can't have a hero without some shoehorned romance that serves absolutely nothing. Just like Venom, this movie attempts to paint Morbius as some troubled hero that is a victim of an unfortunate series of events, only to pit him against a character that is more like the titular character than the titular character. Just like Venom, this movie stars a charismatic actor in the lead role who actually does a good job with the material they are given. In fact, I'd venture to say Jared is the best part of the beginning of the film. The problem is the material is just meh. I walked out of this thing thinking, why the hell did I go to the movies today? Usually when I go to a film, I come away having gained something, whether that was a good experience or another story for my mind to mull over. This film was just a waste of my time. It isn't building anything. It has nothing poignant to say. The action isn't great. The acting is robotic and it's not very funny. Scratch that. There's a scene at the end where Morbius performs a bat kamehameha, which had me laughing so hard I was in tears. Yes, I said bat kamehameha. That's what Sony thinks of you as a consumer that you are so stupid, you will come watch a movie where the titular character charges bats in his hands and fires it at a villain like Goku simply because you think there's a connection to Spider-Man. This film is a fucking disgrace. We have had nearly 15 uninterrupted years of competent superhero movies now. There is no excuse for something like this to exist in 2022. Sony is literally laughing at you for buying a ticket to this because they know you will come watch this movie no matter what because you just gotta know what happens with a Spider-Man character. I implore you, don't. Send them the message that they must take better care of these characters or we will stop lining their pockets. This movie is not good. 
it's nothing. It's a sandwich made out of the air that accompanies a burp. It is Sony completely misunderstanding why the MCU is good at what it does and why the DCEU has more than one good superhero film. There is a reason this film was delayed six times, which is two more times than The New Mutants, a movie I also gave an F.